On Stage is brought to you in part by BRT Weekend Florida Keys, November 26 to 28. For tickets and info, visit brtweekend.com. And VFS Weekend Florida, November 26 to 28. For tickets and info, visit their Instagram page at VFS underscore weekend underscore INC. It has been all of three weeks since the Pathways International Saga started in Jamaica. And ever since, the island has been reeling in its aftermath. It is still today one of the biggest news items here and abroad. Former dancehall artist, now pastor of his own church, Junior Tucker, will join to weigh in. Lisa Hyper joins the growing list of female dancehall artists who are going under the knife for the perfect look. Lisa will be here to talk about that and to drop her latest music project. And she will be live. How many of you knew that dancehall artist Tommy Lee has a son in music? Well, yes he does. And his name is Skirdle. Skirdle will be here to share his music and his claim to fame. All you need to know about the 10th anniversary staging of BRT Weekend. All coming up, plus this week's Guinness Top 10 Trending Countdown and more. My name is Jason Williams, filling in for Winford Williams, and we will be right back. On stage with Winford Williams, so much more than entertainment. And it's Guinness time, or top 10 trending songs in Jamaica, courtesy of YouTube. Intense and Sky Bad with Inna the Ghetto starts off our countdown at number 10. Coming in at number 9, it's Chronic Law with a brand new entry called One Strap. Javelani has a gunman party at number 8. Alkaline talks the system at number 7. And Mayday by Idonia and Governor is number 6. Starting off our top 5, it's Massacre with an update. While Silk Boss with Stay to Myself debuts at number 4. Kia Brockback by Squash jumps into the number 3 spot on our Guinness trending countdown. While Skeng and Yang shift into the number 2 position this week with Heaven Pass for And the brand new number 1 on our trending countdown this week is Massacre's Love Story. It's that time again when fun seekers from all over will converge on one city for a concept called Beach Road Trip Weekend, aka BRT. The head cook and bottle washer, Hans Mullings, joins us right now from Florida to tell us all about it. Hans, my friend, welcome, sir. How are you doing? How are you doing, Jason? I'm glad you remember the titles that I gave you. I add some more to it. I'm number one flyer giver router. That's a new <laughs> word thing I just come out with and a garbage picker of the event also. Uh, I hear you, sir. So tell us, you started this concept 10 years ago. 10 years ago, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind? 10 years ago, um, when we came up with the BRT concept, we were thinking that people in the United States, they want to get away, but 
they don't only want to go to the island that they're they are born or the island they're from. Everybody loves their island. In fact, anyone from Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, Guyana's, and the list goes on. Bahamas, Haiti, what island is the best? They're going to always say theirs. And they all, all the islands have beautiful things about them. But what I realized by living here in Florida, and we're so close to the islands, we have nice beaches here too. We have beautiful atmosphere here too. And instead of going to the islands, mm -hmm. We'll just bring the island vibe here and have a three-day festival, all-inclusive event on the beach in the Florida Keys. And not a lot of persons can can boast that they started something 10 years ago and 10 years later it's still happening. What would you say is the winning formula for you? I mean, aside from the concept of the event, what would you say made you a winner or makes you a winner? I think what what drives us is customer satisfaction so we jump in it not to not to say i am the one putting on the biggest baddest party in the world and my party is this and go to a barber shop and sit down and talk like a lot of people do and a restaurant and say yo me bring mobada or me bring this artist or me bring that artist or me bring next and that no that is not my satisfaction my satisfaction is when i look at my email and i said that was a well worth vacation. When are you guys are going to do a next one? Right. I think you should consider my city. I should consider my town. It's not just by looking at the bank account and saying, wow, we made nice money from it. No, it's what we leave, the imprint we leave on the customers. All right, and we have to talk now about, we have to talk more about this year's stage. And we're talking about names like Spice. We're talking about Supercat. We're talking about Ding Dong. We're talking about uh, your, your resident artist. I'm going to call him a resident artist, Mr. Killer. Major hype. It's star studded this year. We, have, we never had Spice at BRT before in mm -hmm. 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy to have Spice for the first time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a great show. Super Cat, the Dan Dada himself, who never did one of these weekends before. Never, um, never did any kind of weekend before, so, um, all inclusive weekend stuff. He's coming out, ding dong on it. It's a killer on it. We have voice on it. We're very happy to get voice. Big soccer artist. A lot of people who are um, not familiar with that. Big mm -hmm. soccer artist voice we have on it. Mr. Killer, who always gives us a great performance. Always. Yes. And like, it's like BRT. It's not BRT without, without Mr. Killer. Mr. Killer. True, true. And he, he, gave, he gave everyone such a great show. And um, it's been a while since we had major hype on our show. And what's great is um, we just add Ramesh on it. He's hosting BRT All White. So Ramesh um, and um, Entertainment will be there, um, the all-white party. Oh, and Governor, we're not even talk about Governor. This is the first time Governor is on BRT weekend. Mm. Um, we did a few shows with him already this year, me and my team. But um, this, at BRT weekend, this is the first time, so. November 26 to 28, BRT, the 10th anniversary staging in the Florida Keys. Jason, I want to tell you thanks again and respect to the whole on-stage family, always showing us love from the first BRT weekend. Respect that a lot, bro. All right, thank you, Hans, and congratulations, and we look forward to seeing you, seeing you in the Keys very soon. Okay, bro. Have a good one. All right, so there you have him, BRT Weekend Head Cook and Bottle Washer, Hans Mullings. Stay with us, still to come. It has been all of three weeks since the Pathways International Saga started in Jamaica. Former dancehall artist, now pastor of his own church, Junior Tucker, will join to weigh in. Lisa Hyper joins the growing list of female dancehall artists who are going under the knife for the perfect look. Dancehall artist Tommy Lee has a son in music. His name is Skirdle. Skirdle will be here to share his music and his claim to fame. We'll be right back. On Stage is brought to you in part by BRT Weekend Florida Keys, November 26 to 28. For tickets and info, visit brtweekend.com. And BFS Weekend Florida, November 26 to 28. For tickets and info, visit their Instagram page at VFS underscore weekend underscore INC. I bet you didn't know that Tommy Lee has a son in music. Well, he definitely does, and he's joining us right now in this segment. He goes by the name Skirdle Sparta. Skirdle, welcome, sir. Bless How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you feeling in this moment, sir? 17 
you have your first hit song. I mean, you're getting a lot of attention. Yeah. Describe this feeling in this moment for us. You know, feel good in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Daddy push it and motivate me and thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me feel good how this song is trying and thing, you know? Yeah. No respect to boss lady and things, see me. And, and the first thing that I'm sure everyone will notice is that you sound just like him. Yeah. <laughs> is that your natural sound? Yeah, man, so I sound, man, you know. Okay. Yeah. And you're 17 years old? Yeah, 17 years old. Tell us about your start in music. How did, was music something that you were always thinking about from a tender age, or is it something that you were inspired to do yeah. when, you, when your father started music? You know, I said, uh, music, you know. Music, you know, that's in my blood, in my family, you know. Mm -hmm. I have an auntie, me always hear about when my lily and things see me, they call herself, I suppose, a Selena, you know. I said, she was a big artist and things see me. Mm -hmm. My auntie, it's a Christian family and things see me, you know. My auntie sing in a church and things, you know. Yeah, can play the keyboard and things, can play the guitar, the bass. I have a cousin see me play the drum and thing, you know? Yeah, can build rhythm and thing see me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I regular my build rhythm see me. When my daddy hear and thing, he see it so I can re, you know, me freestyle and thing for it see me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And at what age would you say you were bitten by the music bug, if you can remember? You know, so do, I remember me in a grade four still, you know? I mean a grade four. Always, you know, lunchtime, always freestyle with my friend, them see me. Mm. You know, they made it. Always a right song and thing. Yeah. You used to do rap and thing, see me. Mm -hmm. So till I start pick up a dance hall, you know. Yeah. And do you feel like you are a part of this elite club of sons of famous people, or do you feel like a normal person? How do you feel? I <laughs> feel normal, though, man. feel normal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I feel normal. I don't feel no difference from nobody else, you know? So was there ever a point in your life where you felt like music was not going to be what you were doing? Was there, was, were you thinking about anything else at any point in your life? No, you know. Just I, music? I always know, say, yeah, music, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My career still, you know, me want to be a pilot at that moment and things until... You know, I still want to be a pilot, see me, but they don't know me, I still love the music. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. always I sing more while I'm a beat, I'm stomping in the bathroom, I build some rhythm and freestyle, see me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, daddy see it, you know, for a long time and thing, you know? Yes. Yeah. So you said that when you were young, you used to, you know, beat the, the, the desk yeah. and make music and freestyle and stuff. Mm -hmm. At what point did it become serious? What, what point did you say, okay, we're transitioning now from just raw talent and making this now my career? You know, so though I went, I did in a seventh grade and thing. Mm -hmm. I moved to Kingston, I lived with my daddy and thing. Okay. So, you don't know. Okay, you know, I'm in a Kingston and thing. Yes, yeah, so I'm in a live Kingston and thing. And so, you don't know one or two times. You know, you have a studio up in the house and thing. Mm -hmm. You eat a freestyle in there and thing. You don't know me in there with him one or two times, see me. And a freestyle, see me. And him see it, say, man, I can do my thing and thing. You know what I mean? And see it, say, I have it in me. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So from, from about 7th grade is when you yeah, decided seventh that? 7th grade, yeah, I come to Kingston and yeah. they run. And there's so MC, the full thing, you know what I mean? Because I always send him voice notes and things of two phones. When I play with him, when I record, I make him hear what I go and see me. Mm. As I tell him, I build my rhythm them. I send him, make him hear them and things see me. Yeah. So this song that we're about to drop, is, is it your first official recording or no? No. I have only a single on my record, you know? Just one day. But is it your first official release, though? Yeah, yeah, first, first release. First official release? Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, the first release, but then I first song on my record. Right. I have a couple songs more on my record and mm -hmm. thing. One day we in a studio and thing, and my daddy get a rhythm and a plate and thing, and I say, I was scared. He talk of one day. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, 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 I'm
So tell we are boss. So we are go to the bunks and freestyle. And, you know? So tell us come up with it and start singing it. You know what I mean? Because mm. the rhythm gave a party and a girl vibes. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and we just did it. And, uh, freestyle and thing and thing. And I do it back to back. See, you know what I mean? And we're talking about this song, The Orchids. Yeah, kicks. The Orchids. Yeah. Right. Yeah, do it back to back and thing and did a record and record so till you know the song just complete. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. One we never take one three hour. We just in there and a freestyle and freestyle so till we did everything just connect, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't really know where sit down and write. It's nice too though with it. Get the vibes and just deal with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so let's not hold it anymore. Let us pause in this moment and give you guys a taste of Dior Kicks. Let's go. All right, so there you have it. Dior Kicks from Skirdle Sparta. Now, if you're a lover of music, I don't know, maybe you're not penetrating the lyrics, but if it's the sound alone, I can tell you. That one is something that you'll definitely feel. You'll be dancing to. I like it. You can talk about it. How do you feel about it? How do you feel about it, sir? How is it doing so far? Yeah, do good, man, you know? Yeah. 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 Good comments, good feedback and things from it, you know what I mean? 500 and odd, I think. 500, the last time I checked, it was 500. 600,000 yeah, views yeah, on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 600 k, you know? Yeah. Here they play regular, you know? Get all the people video and play in a party and thing. Yeah. I feel good to see me. I know my daddy proud of me and things to see me, you know? And you should yeah. be proud of yourself because, I'm I mean, there are, other, myself, there, are other, there are other children of, of, mm -hmm. of big name artists that dabble in music and they're not mm -hmm. always successful. Mm -hmm. And um, as a matter of fact, the bar is a little bit higher for them because yeah. people see them as having an advantage over other people. So they, they, they mark them harder. So the fact that you are, you have this song and it's doing so well, it's something for you to be proud of. And from what I'm hearing, you are a credible, credible artist. You're not yeah. just trying a thing, you know? So, so congrats on that. Um, how do you describe your music though? What is, what do you push yourself in a genre? Dance, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I have a couple of rap songs, same as me tell, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, I love rap, same, me so mostly. Rap music and thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, listen dance all the same. Yeah. 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 But, you know, describe it in a day, dance all, you know? So yeah. you don't see yourself doing anything else really other than dance all and maybe a little rap? Let me tell you, you know, in the future, we have rap song release and thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you see dance all. You know, in a Jamaica, you know, you know, rap thing now. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And how much does your father inspire you? I know clearly he, he inspires you, but how much do you hear his voice in your head when you're doing your music? I hear it at all times, because I record a few voice me I hear, you know? Mm. Yeah, a few voice me I hear when I record and thing, you know? Yeah. Um, that it inspire me, push me fully and thing, motivate me and thing, you know? Yeah. And who are the other artists that inspire you? Who are the other artists for you? Yeah. 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 I expect I expected that. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else that you look up to, listen to, inspire you to the music? Not really, you know. Mm -hmm. It's vibes cartel and my daddy straight, you know? Yeah. Okay. And where are you looking to go in music? What is the ultimate aim for you? You know. I want to reach out there, you know international and you know play boy and think and tour the place and thing you know they made it mm -hmm. yeah and you're 17 years old i have to ask you this question before yeah. we leave you're 17 and a lot of things are happening in the world right now yeah. coronavirus and you know just just a lot of how do you view your future do you feel optimistic about the future do you feel positive about the future as a young person yeah you know. I feel positive, you know? Mm. I really made the corona thing and I just focus on the future and keep on the right track, you know? Mm. Yeah, can't get distracted and stray. Just stay on the right track. Yeah. Sound good. Anything you want to tell us before we leave? Anybody you want to big up? Yeah, man, big up Boss Lady Music, right? Mm. So, big up my daddy. Happy birthday, you know, this daddy. Yeah, big up 
can see, you know, big up damage music, you know, big up Andrew Blocks, big up all I produce of them, man, and all I artists, them and thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who are the persons that make up your team? Are you signed to like a label? Are no. you? No, so you're just I independent, would. just doing music. Yeah. And who are the, I know Boss Lady is a part of the team. Who else? Boss Lady, yeah, you know, I manage and thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, who's the music and things, see yeah, me? Okay. Yeah. Boss Lady music and who's the music. Yeah. All right, so well, we look forward to a lot more great things from you. Like I said, you have the sound. You sound like a credible artist. You don't sound like you're trying something. Yeah. So that is a good thing. We look forward to when you are back on the stage, when you have more hit songs and more success. Yeah. So thank you for being here. And I hope to see you soon, sir. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, man. All right. So there you have him in this segment. Son of Tommy Lee, Skirtle Sparta. Definitely going places in music. And if, his, if this video is anything to go by, if his voice is anything to go by, then we'll be hearing a lot more from him. All right, stay with us, still to come. And stay with us, still to come. Lisa Hyper joins the growing list of female dancehall artists who are going under the knife for the perfect look. Lisa will be here with her latest music video and she will be live. Former dancehall artist, now pastor of his own church, Junior Tucker chimes in on the Pathways International saga that is going on in Jamaica right now. We'll be right back. On stage with Winford Williams, so much more than entertainment. It's been three weeks since the Pathway Saga started here in Jamaica. And by the Pathway Saga, I'm talking, of course, about the church in Montego Bay, led by now deceased Kevin Smith, where three people were murdered in what is said to be a cult-like ritual. How could this happen in Jamaica? People are calling it a Netflix series. Here to weigh in on this topic is former dancehall artist, now gospel artist, and a pastor of his own church, Junior Tucker. Junior Tucker, welcome, sir. God bless you, sir. It's good to be it here. Is, it Thank is you. so good to have you. My honor. It's my honor. Thank you for being here. Yes, sir. I'm sorry that this is yeah. how you had to be here, but yeah. thank you nevertheless. Okay. So the news comes on, yeah. whether it be social media or wherever it was, yeah. and you hear of these things happening and it is associated with the church. Yeah. What was, what was your reaction to that? Well, the, f the first thing we have to be very careful of is to, the verdict is still out on if this place was a church or if it was a cult. Mm -hmm. Because let's, let's, be, let's be careful. This didn't just happen three weeks ago. Like out of the blue, they were good before and we were having a great church service or a church organization. And then all of a sudden we became cultish. This was a leading, I met, I met him actually like 13 years ago and ministered yeah. with him in Canada. So this is somebody that I've interacted with and had you know, connection in, in, in a sense to a pastor who was his spiritual dad at the time I don't know if they're still together or if they were together up until this time. But I came there to minister as one of the pastors who were preaching and he was one of the pastors preaching. So we would hang, we would hang out for the, like the weekend or for the week mm -hmm. in the two different occasions that I was with him. So this is people that you interact with, but then some people have their philosophies and their way of doing what they think is church, mm -hmm. but it's not church. It doesn't represent church because church will always bring you back to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Church don't bring you to the person. If I'm a pastor, I am supposed to lead you into a personal relationship with God. I'm a coach. I'm not the Lord. I'm not who you worship. Mm. You, don't, you don't need my approval to tell you what to do with your daily life. You don't come to serve me. I come to serve you. Mm -hmm. So these are things that we have to be careful of as to say, let's look at this situation and see if it is really a church or a cult. And that brings me to the next question. Yeah. What is a cult? How do we know that it's a cult? Because 
I remember looking at some of his minis you know, his videos. Yeah. And the things that he was saying yeah. sounds like, you know, a lot of it sounded like a what a typical pastor would do. They yeah. you know, they're on the pulpit and they, they talk to their, their 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 congregation. Right. So how do I know now that this is a cult? Clearly, the, clearly what happened three weeks ago yes. is clearly crazy. Right. But from what I am seeing in terms of his regular week-to-week week -week ministries, right. it, it would seem like it's a church. Okay. The Bible teaches us that um, the first thing we have to do is to remember that the, the enemy masquerades like an angel of light. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to look like a red man in a red suit with two horns on him head. He's going to look like a preacher. He's going to look like, you know, truthfully t to tell you, a businessman. He's going to look handsome. He's going to look like a man who looks like regular Joe. Mm -hmm. So when the person comes, it's not the appearance you test. You test the spirit. Test what they're saying, right? Mm -hmm. And there were times, yes, he was telling you about Jesus Christ. Yes, he was teaching Bible. Yes, he was doing church rituals. But then he was also doing things, calling himself certain titles, certain names. And you look in the Bible, they're not there. Mm -hmm. Calling himself, doing certain things, people following him, dedicating their lives to him. Ain't nobody at my house cleaning my shoes. Right. I'm a pastor. I come to serve the people. I, I counsel people. Right. I, I you know, pray for people. I, I, I minister to the people's needs. Mm -hmm. I pray for them. I preach the word. And I keep church that people can have a spiritual place to come to and to connect with their God for themselves. When they come to me with their decisions, I'll give them wisdom, but I don't tell them what to do. I don't own anybody. I don't even own members in my church. Right. But I can say, you are my member, and if you need to go, I have to give you permission. You, 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 you belong to God first. I happen to be a coach yeah. on the side saying to you, okay, this is what I think. And even my spirit, you have to test. Because you should know him for yourself. So the cult always leads you to the person. The world begins and ends with them. Mm. The church is supposed to point you to Jesus Christ. So here's the problem now. Right. Here's the problem now. Even churches are cult-like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, they're not necessarily cults, but they act cult-like. They are, they are cultish ways about them. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do, it's, it's the Christianity is a double thing. Christianity is personal to me and God, but it is also corporate. But the personal should, the, the corporate should aid the personal. The, mm -hmm. the, the corporate is not supposed to lead the personal. I'm not supposed to put my personal on the back burner to then think whatever the church say, whatever my pastor say. No, mm -hmm. it's, this is what I feel in my life with God. When I look into the word, I, this is what I believe God is saying to me. What well, pastor, what do you give me your opinion on it? Mm -hmm. And the pastor says, okay, this is what I think the word of the Lord is saying mm -hmm. unto you or in my prayer for you. This is what I think. Okay, I'll take that into consideration. You know, you can sit in a church and the pastor comes to you and say, give X amount of money. You don't, you don't feel like to give, you don't give. And any pastor who, who wants to pressure you for that, that's not, a, that's not a pastor. You're supposed to give freely as directed of the Lord, not of the pastor. So the pastor, the church, is supposed to aid your relationship with God and not be your relationship with God. That's the difference. I mean, I could go deeper, but it, that, that's in a nutshell. That's, that, that's what it is. Yeah, and, and people are asking the question, how could this happen? Meaning, how could people be so vulnerable or leave themselves up to becoming a part of this kind of a situation. <laughs> and they ask, they, they ask questions about, is it poverty? Is it desperation? No, is not, it, it's certainly is it not evil? Poverty. Some no. evil spirit that mm -hmm. bring them? What, what, how could people fall mm -hmm. for this? Evil spirit is, is, is involved because to have that kind of charisma, that charisma mm -hmm. that he possesses, mm -hmm. he, he, obviously he was not operating on the spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He was operating on another spirit. Mm -hmm. So there is that involvement. But in the same token, based, remember, remember no, no, Christianity, like any faith, Buddhism, any faith, is a relationship between you and a, you and a, and a sovereign God. You, yes. the so, you the vassal and the sovereign, the sovereign God, whatever you determine to, to be, mm -hmm. right? So when he comes in now and he's doing certain things and he's whatever, whatever, you may say to yourself, how can these people do these things? They're educated people. It goes from poor people to educated people. It goes from rich people to, you know, to, to people who, in your mind, you would say, that person don't have much sense. Right. That's not really what it is. It's a belonging. Mm. It's that thing inside of you that says, I want to be, belong. I, it, it preys on people's vulnerability. It, on, on, it, most of these people, when they come to these cults, it's because something happened to them in a traumatic way. And then the person takes advantage of that situation instead of directing them to God for themselves, mm. to become independent and strengthened for themselves. Because that person in the first place is not secured within himself to mm. be a servant. He wants to be king. 
calls himself certain names that when you when they talk to you there's no talking about Christ right. there's no they themselves are not submitted to God Paul says it this way in, in the book in, in, in the book uh, in, in Timothy he says to, to, to Timothy follow me as I follow Christ so what he's saying to Timothy if I'm not following Christ don't follow me so when you come to my church if you see me not following Christ Wait a minute there, Pastor Tucker. This is not, this is not right. Yeah. I follow Christ because I see you following Christ. And even then I follow Christ for myself. You are just another person on the sideline with me going the same path. But you operate in a different office. But, but in this office that you operate, all you're doing is a, is a big brother on the sideline saying to me, come on, we can do this. We can do this together. But we're all walking towards Christ. So these are the things we have to look for right. to kind of let us know what is the clarity. You know what I mean? And... There have been stories in recent time about the church and yeah. losing relevance. Yeah. What is the point of the church these days and the church is not doing what they're supposed to do? We've, yeah. we've heard stories about that in recent times. Well, you do, you, yeah. do you think that, do you think that, that reality mm -hmm. leaves spaces open for persons like Kevin Smith to swoop in and develop this kind of cult then? I, I think Kevin Smith has been going on for, 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 from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, even amongst the disciples, we had one who betrayed him, right, named Judas, uh. right? So, so the Kevin Smiths and, and people like that, they're still going on together today. It's like everybody gets a license to open a restaurant, mm -hmm. right? You go to Emory Chap restaurant and it's bad. The food terrible. What do you do? You don't stop going to restaurants. You find the restaurant that you, need, that you like, that, that serves the, the good food. And the ones who are not good will fade away, hopefully. Here's the problem, though. Mm. We're, if we're not careful now, what we'll try to do now is we want our police to come in now and say, okay, let's protect these people now from these cults. Well, who police the police? Like an independent church like mine now. Right. Who's going to come in and say, well, I don't like Juno Tokan. I don't like how him wear jeans and a film pulpit. Mm -hmm. And how him do so, and him play reggae music and whatever, whatever. That's not church. Yeah. And he must be signed up to my denomination for him to be, you know, a relevant Right, so to speak. What's relevant? Mm -hmm. Because I may do something different from you, do something different from you. It doesn't mean I'm not relevant and I'm not relevant. So we have to leave people the, the ability mm -hmm. to, to, to walk with God for themselves. Is it, is, it, is it sad that they have to be come to these kind of things? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. But in the same token, we need to be careful that we don't shut down and, and, and regulate the thing now to a point now where we become this regimented militant thing mm -hmm. that people don't have the freedom to express themselves because there are some practices that we may say it's not in the bible but for those people they like that practice because that's the way their church does it mm -hmm. are we going to call them cults and say well they don't that's a cult because it's not in the bible people we have to allow the sadly to sad to say i mean we don't want it to get back to what happened three weeks ago right but sad to say we have to allow people to walk in their faith and experience their faith and choose the, the right to be to, to exercise their faith whether or not it is what we consider to be you know protecting them or whatever kind of a thing crazy kooky whatever it is this but, is what it is well how do i now know that it's a cult how do i know that it's not a cult though because if so if the church has different, if different churches have different rules and different yeah. ways of doing things. Yeah. For instance, Kevin Smith, I saw in one of his videos where yeah. he was collecting money from people for being late for church. Yeah. You understand? He may decide that that is a way of instilling discipline in the church. No. You understand? No. I don't know. I'm just saying. But, but, but I'm how saying, do I know? How do you know? Very good. Awesome question. How do you know the word of God? Mm -hmm. There's no place in the world where Jesus Christ took any offering from anybody for coming to church late. <laughs> Right. So you, you go, wait a minute, big man. That's that not right. And you leave. No, but you spoke earlier about practices that some, some churches may take on practices that they like. Yeah. Versus yeah, some, other churches. Some churches say, I don't want the women wearing pants in my church. Mm -hmm. some, some churches say, the one must wrap them head. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't, women mustn't speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's not really my Bible, but do, do that, that gonna harm anybody? Maybe for some women, it's got, I should not wear, wear pants. I, I like that kind of a setting. I like when the music quiet. I don't like reggae. I like mm -hmm. old time hymns and I like, that's, that's your thing. I mean, we, we don't want to know, come now and then whose rules do we follow? Whose interpretation of the rules do we follow? Right. No, if it's getting into a place where it's focusing, taking the focus off God and it's focusing on a man and letting him become now the God, the doorway to, 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 to eternal life, 
then we're getting into cult-like activities. So you have to know God for yourself. You have to know the word for yourself. Right. And even me, who preach in the, in the, in the pulpit, you have, my, I tell my, my people in my church, you have to you test, test what I say. What did I say? Did the Bible say that? Right. Check me out and let's, let's reason about it. So, so for the persons who want to use this Kevin Smith situation, Mm -hmm. and say that, see, let me see, tell you about them pastor boy and the church mm -hmm. and I saw them stay and them a thief and them a this and them a that and them a that. Because, yeah. you, know, you know, people are looking yeah. for, for, for reasons to, yeah. to not trust the church and cost the church and yeah. whatever, for whatever reason. Yeah. You say to them what? I say to them, we still have a prime minister today that we vote in all the time. We still have a minister, a leader of opposition. We still have restaurants that close down and restaurants that spring up and we like this one and we don't like that. It's about choice. We need to be careful that we don't get into a place where we become so, we want people to think for us. Mm -hmm. Faith is an engaging sport, if I can use that word. You have to engage. You have to learn it for yourself. And as you learn it, you test the spirit. The Bible tells you that. It don't matter if it's Junior Tucker or Reverend Bishop the Great, Excellence, whatever, whatever, from so and so and so. None of that don't mean anything. What is his spirit? Who is he pointing me to? You can't use one man and write off an entire faith. Right. You don't do that in other things. You right. want to buy a car, you don't like Benz, you go buy BM. Right. But that's what you like. So we have to stop being so, because let's, let's be honest, when we do that, you know, what we're really doing you know, is, is finding an excuse to say, I don't want to come to church. Because yeah, you know, if you really want to come to a church, you go in this one and you don't like it. You go to, you you go to another one. one. Hmm? That's, that's, what it, that's what it's about. I've had people come to my church and say, I don't like your church. And I'm going, okay, that's fine. No problem. What are you really looking for? The music too loud. You don't like it in your jeans. I said, okay, you're not, you're not more traditional church. You can go to this church that's a very powerful church. I know the pastor. This man is a man of integrity, walks with God. That's the church for you. And they tell me, thank you, thank you, pastor. After I see them after a while, I say, yeah, man, that was a good church. So it, that, that's what it's about. It's about style. It's about feel. It's about what you like and what you don't like. Because it's, it's a living experience. Mm -hmm. It's not dogmatic. It's a living encounter with the living God who is fashioning, so to speak, a relationship personally with you while he fashions a corporate move. That is the body of Christ. And it's a, it's a very mysterious, dynamic thing. Mm -hmm. But we have to engage in it. It, it just doesn't happen. It does not overflow and take you and carry you where you want to go. So we have to be, we have to have a spirit of discernment. Yes. When we... That is the first thing. Solomon prayed for that. Mm -hmm. He's standing in front of God and God said, what do you want? And Solomon said, you know what? Don't give me money. <laughs> Don't give me all the kingdoms of the earth. Give me wisdom. Give me, give me the knowledge to know you right. and to understand you. And then God said, okay, you know what? I can give you that. By the way, I'm going to make you a rich man too. Uh, because that comes with riches. That comes with blessings. And, and Solomon was like, wow. And we all know Solomon we, from every, every faith know of Solomon. Yeah. Right? So the point I'm making is it's really the most important thing we need to get is wisdom and understanding. A spirit that says, you know, I want to know you. Then the Bible, I'm not a Biblian, you know. I'm not a Bible man, you know. I'm not a church man. I'm first and foremost a Christian. I walk with Christ. Mm. The Bible and church aids my walk with Christ. And we can't have you here, <laughs> sir, and we're not talk music. Okay. So for the persons who are watching right now who don't know the story and the connection, yeah. you were a dancer artist. Yes, sir. Up to what year? 1997, I gave my life to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And, tell, and talk to us about a little bit about those early years and oh, then the boy. transition into, yeah. into becoming a gospel artist. Well, this year is actually 50 years of me singing. Totally. Mm -hmm. I started when I was five. Mm -hmm. I'm 55. I got, was 55 years old in September. Boy wonder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So days. it's been my life. You know, it's, you know from, from Mr. Telephone Man to with Side of the Coin, Don't Test, all those songs coming up, She's Just 16, all those songs. The dance hall stuff, which is, you know, the love of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. the, the give it up, those kind of stuff. All that stuff coming right up. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been doing that for, for some 30 something years and then I went into, into gospel. And I've been doing reggae gospel since that, you know, the, the sold outs and the healing me and those songs. And, and that's been my life. And in pastoring now, I've been a senior pastor. I've been in ministry for the past 20, 20 years, mm. but I've been really a senior pastor for the past six years. Our anniversary is this Sunday, the 7th of November. Tomorrow. Our sixth anniversary. Yeah, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, it's our sixth anniversary. And we're going to be celebrating that. Our, ch our church is Family Word and Worship. Mm -hmm. You can check us out on any, any social media platform. Family Word and Worship. 
And um, we're going to be having our, 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 our service, and I, my, along with my wife, I passed that church. Uh, some, some beautiful people who God is just, you know, working in their lives and uh, alongside of me, mm -hmm. changing all of us to be, you know, more like him. And it's, it's been a beautiful ride so far, you know. And if you're watching this right now and you're listening to Pastor Tuck and you're wondering, you know, how him sounds so astute. <laughs> not, only is a, not only is he a pastor, but he's also the host of a brand new radio show on The Bridge, 99 FM. Yes, that show is called On The Bridge. And what we do in that show, very, very simply, we try to bring a conversation together from the church and the street. Mm -hmm. Because I believe, I believe in my heart really and truly that the street has a, a kind of funny way of looking at the church. Yeah. Some of the things we, we have been guilty of, of you know, bringing that perception across. Right. But then in the same token, I think the church don't really get to know the street. We were so locked in our church and our bubble. Mm -hmm. We don't really get to understand where people are at and how they see things. They're just heathens yeah, and they're, they're just heathens sinners. And going to hell. Yeah, and we need to come out and go, no, hey, why are, why are we not having a conversation? Let's yeah. have a conversation. So we don't come to change them. We don't come to dictate. I'm not there to preach. We're there to have reasoning and discussions. And it's, it's been going so far. I think we have, this is our 16th episode, our 17th episode. We've been doing really good so far. You know, I would agree because like I've listened. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you said, and remind us again, you said that tomorrow you're celebrating. Tomorrow we're celebrating six years, Family Word and Worship Church. It's our anniversary. Mm -hmm. You can log on on, on any, uh, Facebook, Instagram, any one of those, and look for Family Word and Worship Church. You'll see us 10.30. We'll be on tomorrow, to, you know, tomorrow 10.30 in the morning, and you can catch our anniversary service. We'll be on. Pastor Tucker, it is so good to have you. Thanks for joining my, us my, in this it's segment. My honor. It's my honor. Thank you. We look so forward to all of what you're going to do in music the future. Music coming next year. Music. Yeah. More music. Music coming next year. All right. So yeah. we look forward to that. Maybe we'll have you again and you can give That'd us a... Nice. That'll be nice. A gospel showdown yes, here sir. in our studios. How that sound? That sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you, for, thank you for joining us in this segment. Bless you. And all the best, sir. You too. Take care. All right. So there you have it in this segment. Pastor Junior Tucker and... Let me tell you, if you're looking for a new family or a church family, you can check out Family Word and Worship. And in my friend Miss Kitty's words, no fubble double going on down there. We won't be sacrificing, they won't be sacrificing anybody. You understand? And if you want to listen and hear the words of Pastor Tucker, you can follow him or you can listen to him on Bridge, the Bridge 99 FM on a Sunday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And that's it, Junior Tucker in this segment. Stay with us when we come back. Lisa Hyper. I might have to start calling her Lisa Hypest because she's gone to her next level now. On Stage is brought to you in part by BRT Weekend Florida Keys, November 26 to 28. For tickets and info, visit brtweekend.com. And VFS Weekend Florida, November 26 to 28. For tickets and info, visit their Instagram page at VFS underscore weekend underscore INC. Lisa Hyper joins the growing list of female dancehall artists who are going under the knife for the Designer body. Lisa joins us right now to talk about that and to drop her latest music video. And like I said before, she will be live. And I don't know, might, might have a star color, Lisa Hypest. Lisa? Hi, Jason. Can I call you Lisa High Pest now? I feel like you and reach. You want to call me I feel like you reach the highest level. I you know you're High Pest. Anything you want to call me, I call me. But I'm not like over the too far. Just uh, you know, you know the Corona thing. Can you give me a touch? <laughs> so Lisa, how, how are you? How are you feeling in this moment? How are I'm you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Yeah. You know, I'm great, and um, I'm in my sense of creativity right now mm -hmm. at the highest. So you know the brain I work mentally. And you always, anytime you, anytime you grace the stage, you always bring a sense of high fashion and hair thank and... Thank you, thank you. Yes, and Raw Beauty Studio uh -huh. a new one, <laughs> something new. I know you turn it up now with the designer body. Yeah, sculpture. Well, first and foremost, I love it. Uh -huh. I love the 
because um, it just looked natural. Yeah. It's it's not overdone. Right. You know, because you know I'm always petite. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not overdone. I love it. When we talk to ladies on, our, on, on the show about the designer body and the mm -hmm. surgery and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it's varying reasons. Some people say, you know, it's just to enhance what they already have. Mm -hmm. I've heard one person say that it's about them being an artist and them putting forward a certain look. Mm -hmm. Which one of those is it for you? Well, it's more personal for me mm -hmm. than the fact that I'm an artist and you have to have this type of look, mm -hmm. you know, because if that was the case, I would have, I would have done it, you know, a long time ago. Right. But it was something I was always afraid of. Not that I disregard it or I disregard anyone that got it done before. It's just that I was afraid to go under the knife. The fact that they must have put you to sleep and, you know, it was the whole process I was afraid of. So, you know, I kind of shy away from doing it for a long while. But, you know, mm -hmm. the time came where I just had to make up my mind and do it. And was there ever a time when you felt like you because personally, I would say, you know, mm -hmm. Lisa mm -hmm. never needed it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. every time you come on the stage, you yeah. know, you Yeah, yeah, because then great. I'm going to put myself together. Yeah, yeah. You got my stylist, Raw Beauty Studio. So persons like me and other men and even women too would say, you know, she didn't, she didn't need the surgery. Mm -hmm. What was it for you? Is it something that you felt like? Did you, was there ever a point in your life that you felt like, you know, I'm going to like how I look. I'm going to like this, I'm going to like that. I'm going to need to fix it. And were you ever uncomfortable to the point where you said, you know what, I have to change this because I'm just, you know. All right, well, what, had, what has happened is that um, my, my belly mm -hmm. was growing. I worked out, I changed my diet. Um, it wasn't working. Mm. You know, can't wear certain things again because belly now got bigger me in a belly skin. And I'm so petite, so why a petite girl with such a, you know, high stomach, so. Mm -hmm. I decided to do the surgery and when I went for the surgery and did consultation, I found out that I had a huge hernia. Yeah. So that was the reason for, you know, my belly getting higher and higher. So they removed it and everything. So I actually glad that I went because maybe if I never got more to find out, you understand? So yeah. Yeah, that was definitely the reason, because I didn't get my breast done, mm. you know. I just did a 360 lipo and, you know, yeah, put look like a fat right the sun right so. There, there was one time when mm -hmm. pregnancy yeah. was something that was associated with you. The mm -hmm. people, people said that you were pregnant, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. even you said you were pregnant, because I remember watching a live with you and... I actually thought I was. Yeah. Yeah, I thought and, I and was. And people would say, but how could she... Mm -hmm. think that she was pregnant and was not pregnant. What, what yeah, do you I say about that? I was. It was the same reason, the same it, um, understanding I gave you about my stomach getting mm -hmm. high and mm -hmm. I didn't understand the reason why. Right. Hence other reasons because you know, you know, you have few pregnancy symptoms. So mm. I had those symptoms. Right. Right. Um, it was not just the hernia that was the problem. Um, I had a harmonial problem also. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it was both why I had that. And every time you're here on the stage, you seem, it seems as if you're on a, a path of growth and going to the next level and becoming a better definitely, person and definitely. being a little bit happier and stuff definitely, like that. Where, where would you say you are now on that well, journey? Uh, right now, I'm still growing, mm -hmm. still growing. Um, I like where I'm at right now because um, I'm at a place right now where I found myself. Mm. So I am just, um, I'm just putting, putting it out there. So it's like letting my fan base be a part of where I'm at right now. Mm. Yeah. And musically? Musically, especially musically. I have so much great things in store. And the song that you've brought today speaks to, of course, your new, yes, your new look culture. and stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't want to call it designer body because, you know, designer body, right? It's a brand. The, the type, yeah, it, it's a, not only it's a brand, because big up to designer body because that's where I went to get okay. my surgery done. So big up designer body, but because 
everybody use the design. You know mm -hmm. me like be divergent and different. So mm -hmm. I wanted to come up with something, you know, with a similar meaning. And um, sculpture. So Mineral Boss, who is the producer for the record, she came up with sculpture and immediately I love the name, you know, because it's different and, you know, from your ear that you know, say, no man, that sound different. Mm -hmm. Would I love to see the visual for it. So, you know, we went all out for the, the visual when it came on to creativity, you know, sense of style and fashion and, you know, the whole works. All right, so let's not hold <laughs> it anymore. Let us go and look at the video for Sculpture by Lisa Hyper. All right, there you have it. Sculpture by Lisa Hyper. And that video basically encapsulates where she is now in terms of her music and her look. Lisa, and this one is out already. How is yeah, it doing? Yeah, this one is out. It's doing very great. I mean, mm -hmm. um, the anticipation was very hi mm -hmm. you know um because on your instagram you put out you know you cleared your instagram clear the instagram and then you put up new the, pics. The, the, the picture with mm -hmm. the new body mm -hmm. so people are just like mm -hmm. where is the music now mm -hmm. what's going to happen next right and i added you know some more new pics mm -hmm. and then i placed the audio for sculpture yeah so it's like they felt like i was you know having them in suspense for too long mm -hmm. so yeah but everything was already planned out and how is it doing now <laughs> It's doing great, it's mm. doing great. You know, everyone is happy, you know, love this creativity, you know, love that I'm back because they miss me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. So where do you go from here now in terms of mu What's next for you, I should say? Well, as I said, everything is practically planned out, you know. Mm -hmm. All the songs that I'll be recording is already recorded. Mm -hmm. You know, the marketing strategy for each one is already there. Mm -hmm. um, what I will not do, is talk about the project until it's time for for release. So, so right now it's all about sculpture right now. So is sculpture though a part of that project that you're not talking about yet? Yes, man. Sculpture is definitely sculpture. I'll kick it off. I kick it off. Yeah, this is the kick off. And, and what's to come? <laughs> and you're going to perform for us today? Yes, definitely. And I, definitely. If, if I, like that was well overdue. Well overdue. Well because overdue. I was about to say, I think this is the first time. I don't yes, think you've ever done a performance. First time. First time. And first people time. haven't seen you live in a long time. Long time. So. And we're going to do that right here on our stage. Yeah, we're going to All right. So there you have her, Lisa Hyper, in this segment. But we're not gone yet. We're going to clear the set right now and give it to Lisa Hyper, I'm going to say Hypest, <laughs> for the first time here on our stage live. Here we go. In a designer body, feel weird and all instinct market. It's a body that every man target. Every, every, every man target. Every, every, every man target. Feel weird and all instinct market. It's a body that every man. It's a dog in a shirt. It's a dog in a jeans. Every, every man want a squeeze. Jamaican, American, and Chinese. Living in a media, I said they want a piece. Tight till it all a squeeze. Picture a tech, watch a film cheese. Nick a broke off when me in the street. Ex the mama, then can't leave him peace too. Be man, I'm a mad over me design a bag. Turn up the fat in a design a bag. Turn up the thing. We are no links to the market. Turn up the thing. Turn up the thing. Them no like you and you no like them Them are your enemy, you and them no friend Just show you look better than them How I don't have the equation If you never ever shut a man's smile Boss the best wine Full of clothing, you no textile Defend the, the Gucci, she never get spoiled and that's our show for this week. Jason Williams, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more on stage.
Thanks for watching our video. Please click subscribe and be on our stage anywhere, anytime, always.